I'm pretty sure that I was heading for cardiovascular disease down the road if I kept going like that, you know, but I just, nothing had been measured. So I, I don't know. I can't say that for sure, but I think I'm fairly sure I was, but I, I know that, that I'm feeling so much different. Much it's so much better. And, and I'm super proud of that. And, and like you, and that word that you use that arrogance uh, it exists for me. I, you know, I, I am arrogant about, about what I've achieved. Um, and I think, I think that's, it's so important what you just said, because yes, you're arrogant psychologically, but the more, the other important thing from a health perspective is that insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity is the cornerstone of health. Because the, the, the root cause of metabolic disease is insulin resistance right. and how that plays out. So even a, even a lean guy like yourself, probably by what you were putting in your face on a regular basis, had caused harm. Yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that. that I was. And that's why I feel so much better. Because whatever that harm is that I was causing is not, is not happening anymore. Do you not see improvements in the metabolic health before the weight actually is noticeably? Absolutely, you do, different? Doug. And the best measure of this is a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, because it directly measures what you put in your face. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and the that's problem like immediate. Is, that, like that is immediate. so frustrating for me because the world is against CGMs. Mm. You can't get them. It is ludicrous that the commonest cause of death in this country, which is metabolic disease, and you've got this superb tool for monitoring it. It's like driving a car without a speedometer. Okay? It's yeah. just ludicrous. How can you do that? How can you do that? And, and yet, this beautiful tool is available. It's out there. But it's so cost prohibitive and so tightly regulated that they won't allow us to use it. It doesn't tell you what's entering your mouth. It's telling you what's entering your bloodstream. And that's the most important thing. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, so, totally. you know, if someone says to me, well, this thing makes your blood sugar, this thing's bad for you. I say, let me put my CGM on and let me drink this. Let me eat it. And let's see what the result is. Tell me something speaking about that. So what about um, fructose? Single uh, worst sugar out there. Yes. Fructose does not activate insulin. Right. So you get no insulin response. And actually, you get a higher circulating fructose level in the blood than you do glucose. So if you eat glucose, if you eat um, a of pile fruit. of maltose, which is glucose, glucose, okay, your blood sugar will go up some, but your, your first pass through the liver extracts a huge amount of that sugar. With a fructose, that doesn't happen as directly because insulin is not activated to force the, the liver to take up that sugar or not only the liver, but your other tissues. So your circulating volumes are much higher. And when I was in the lab, when I did my PhD, I used glucose, galactose and fructose and infused them into isolated livers. And the galactose, which is the one you find in milk was actually the least harmful. Mm -hmm. And the, by far the greatest damage to the endothelial cells occurred in a dose response way with fructose. And now, if you want to make this a little bit more complicated, there are hormones called incretins. And they're the peptide YYs, the GLPs. Those are the things that, sensitize, that, that sense the sugar in your, just in your intestinal tract, in the upper GI tract, before it enters the bloodstream. And it is thought that the incretins are the ones that trigger insulin release in the, in the, in the pancreas. They begin the insulin release. So insulin, it's not actually directly sugar in the bloodstream that's triggering insulin. No matter where you are, it's a bell curve. So eventually, even the high insulin producers will reach an endpoint. It just depends on how fat you become before you become diabetic. Mm -hmm. And some people can become enormous because they're very high insulin producers. Other people don't become very fat but die diabetic very early. And that's just insulin production capacity. But that's in response to the consumption of sugar.